Hello, I'm Patty Simpson with Simpson Math. In statistics, we have some question we want answered, so we go out and we collect data to help us to answer that question. And we'd love to be able to get data from our entire group of interest or our whole population. But most of the time, due to time, money, or human resources, we're just not able to do that. So instead, we just collect data from part of our population or a sample of our population. So here we're looking at different methods for collecting a sample of data. We're going to look at a random sample. A random sample, we collect that sample by giving every member of the population an equal chance of being chosen. Every member in the population has an equal chance of being chosen or has an equal probability of being chosen. That's what makes it a random sample, truly random. So the advantages to a random sample, the random sample is like the holy grail of the statistical world. We want to actually get a random sample where that every population member has an equal chance. And that helps us to collect an unbiased um, uh, sample so that it's very much like the population. And uh, not only is it unbiased representation of the population, but then we are able to use that, uh, use statistical methods to analyze the sample results. The disadvantages is it's difficult, sometimes impossible to actually perform or collect an actual random sample. So in order for us to collect that random sample, the first thing we have to do is know everyone within the population. And we have to be able to number those um, members of the population or give those members something so that we can equally choose them. We can choose them with an equal likelihood. And a lot of times with large populations, we're not able to do that. We don't actually know every single member of our population. So it makes it very difficult for us to collect an actual random sample. Here's a couple, here's an example though. A company wants to determine how employees feel about a new policy. The company gets a list of all employees from the human resources department. The company gives each employee a number and uses a random number generator to choose 30 employees to ask questions of. So notice that every employee had a number and then a random number generator, a computer, or you, you can have those on your phone sometimes, where you just get an actual random number is chosen and then th that's the way those employees were chosen. They could have done it some other ways too. Maybe they take all the names of the employees and put them in a hat and mix it up and only choose from the hat or every, um, uh, on a lotto balls in a big lotto machine, every employee's name goes on a lotto ball and they come out on a, uh, just randomly there. Or maybe they can roll a dice to help them to determine so that it truly is an equal chance for each member of the population. But you can see that as if I know all of the employees, then I can number all those employees. Or if I wanted data from all of my students, well, I could give numbers to all my employees students. Or if I had an orchard, maybe I could number all the trees in my, nor in my orchard and then just choose the ones, let the number generator choose which trees. But if I'm looking at fish in, the, in a lake, I can't number all the fish in the lake. I don't know what fish are out there. So I can't actually get a random sample of the fish in the lake. I need to find a new way to be able to have an equal chance of those fish being chosen. So uh, that's an example of a random sample. Math made simple at Simpson Math. Thanks for watching.